Good evening, everyone. It's good to be together again tonight as we uh, close out yet another beautiful gifted day from God. Uh, it's good to be together, to turn our focus to Him, away from the things um, that have occupied our time and to receive some encouragement and hope uh, and grace from our God. And so if you're joining tonight I live, I invite you to uh, say hello in the chat or to, um, as always, add your comments, questions, prayer requests, those things. Uh, if you're not watching live, which some of you do not, I'm just very glad that you found us and uh, hope that you receive something that uh, you find satisfying to your soul whenever it is that you are joining us tonight. Well, we at the Chesterton United Methodist Church have been spending the summer reading through First and Second Samuel and thinking about God's heart and our own hearts and how they match up together. And we've been using the stories of the people that lived during the time of the first kings of Israel, as it's recorded in First and Second Samuel, to, to kind of think about that. Hello, Alan. Good to uh, know you are out there. And so we're going to continue tonight as we've been reading through this week. We were reading through um, chapters 19 through 24, 2 Samuel 19 through 24. And so I picked something from there um, and want to, want to bring that before us. It's David's song of praise that's recorded in 2 Samuel 22 and also is paralleled is um, as Psalm 18. Um, so I'm not going to read the whole uh, song of praise from David. It's rather lengthy and I'll allow you to do that on your own. Uh, but I do want to lift up a few portions uh, for us to think about tonight. And so let's think about David's song of praise as he is speaking to, to God as um, his heart opens before the Lord. He says um, in 2 Samuel 22, verse 3, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, my savior. Can you just hear... David has come before the Lord and is just pouring out his adoration and his praise for God, naming these characters, characteristics and attributes of his God. Remember, this is coming from David, who spent so much of his life hiding out in caves, seeking shelter as his enemies were pursuing him. And so naturally, he calls God his rock and stronghold. And hear about David's situation. Whatever situation it seems that he's finding himself in, he defines it. Look in, in verse 5, it says, The waves of death swirled about me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me, and the snares of death confronted me. Whatever it is that David is going through in this moment feels just beyond his control, beyond his power. He is helpless, powerless in whatever the situation is, and it is a dire situation. You can hear that in the language that he uses, that poetic language. And then I love this. In verse 7, it says, In my distress I called to the Lord. He heard me. I called and God heard. Friends, for you and I both, that is what happens. We call to God in joy. We call to God in pain. We call to God in powerlessness. No matter what, God hears. Then we launch into this really interesting section of scripture, of this song of David, in verses 8 to really about 20, um, 
God is just described, I have no other word for it than supernatural. Supernatural. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came out of his mouth. God parted the heavens and came down with dark clouds under his feet. He soared on the wings of the wind. Out of the brightness of his presence, bolts of lightning blazed forth. His voice thundered. He shot arrows and scattered the enemy. The seas, the valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations laid bare. There was a rebuke from the blast of breath of God's nostrils. That, that is just supernatural, right? That is beyond anything that we can comprehend. It makes me think about, I, I love superhero movies. And even that old campy Batman version in the 1960s, you know, the, the live action Batman uh, who was in that really weird costume and, and they would superimpose the bam and the pow and the whap, you know, every time that Batman and Robin would get into an argument. I, I, I see that this is kind of a glimpse of the supernatural power of our God. He can take out any foe, any enemy, and he's going to do that against all evil in the most unique superpower, supernatural kind of ways, because our God is beyond our comprehension. He is bigger, greater than we possibly can imagine. In the same minute, though, that he's big and great and beyond us, he is also intimate, personal with us. And David recognizes that. That after giving praise to God, the deliverer, the rock, acknowledging his supernatural abilities, David says, but you're with me. Your righteousness cleanses me that David recognizes the, the call that God has on him and on all of us to, to live a, a good and righteous life because God is good and righteous and we are part of him. And then David comes to the part where he recognizes that God with his supernatural strength and abilities also calls us to partner with him. That God uses his amazing powers and gifts to enable us to be his partners. God, David says to God, you make my feet like the feet of a, like you make my feet like the feet of a deer so that I can stand. You train my hands so my arms can bend the bow. You are my saving help and shield. Your help has made me great. You provide the broad path so that my feet don't give way. You are my lamp and turn my darkness into light. Do you see that? God's using the supernatural power to enable and equip David so that David can do the work that God needs him to do. It's the same for you and I, friends, that God uses his gifts and power to call us to live righteous moral lives and to call us into partnership work with him. We aren't able to do all the things that God lays before us, the, the loving one another and serving one another and forgiving one another, the being compassionate with each other and showing acts of mercy. We aren't able to sustain that kind of life on our own power, but God's supernatural power equips us to be his hands and feet, to be his light in the darkness, to be his love in motion. David closes his song of prayer and song of, of praise with those same words again. The Lord lives, praise be to my rock. Exalted be my God, the rock, my savior. How can we not praise when we recognize that God is able, even when we're not able? How can we not praise knowing that even when all is out of control around us, our God is still able? 
I don't know about you, but the news overwhelms me, the decisions we now have to make again because of COVID data, the just the everyday start of school adds complexity to life. Um, illnesses constantly pop up that have nothing to do with COVID, but cause us to have to reassess how we're living our lives when all is swirling out of control around us. Our God is able. When we call to him, he hears. When we need him, he is there. He is our rock, our stronghold, our refuge. Praise be to God. Friends, let's pray together as we close our time. Lord, we thank you for who you are and how you call us into life with you. As we feel out of control, overwhelmed, surrounded by darkness, powerless, Lord, may you show your supernatural self to us, that we would be able to take heart and have courage and cling to hope that you are able to provide for us and to set us on a good path to keep our feet firm and our direction straight. Lord, we thank you that when we cry to you, you always hear us. And so, Lord, I just petition you that as the people who hear the sound of my voice cry out to you, O oh Lord, receive their prayers and respond in grace as you promise. Give us all hope and confidence as we begin our time of rest this night. May we arise with that same hope and confidence filling our hearts that we would be able to do as you've called us. In the name of Jesus, our mighty Savior, we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I bid you good night, sleep well, peace.